Well, thank you very much. Uh, I don't get invited too often to, the, uh, uh, to speak publicly, which will become painfully obvious to you why over the next couple of minutes. Um, every speaker's nightmare, about five minutes before uh, uh, I got up here, uh, my pen broke in my pocket. So I have not been shot. Uh, <laughs> so if you could have the camera just do a headshot on this one, I'd appreciate it. Look. Um, uh, just some background on the company. Uh, we were formed in 1987, uh, uh, started uh, the service uh, with three channels in 1999, went through uh, several different changes from uh, U UHF, analog, uh, terrestrial to uh, digital satellite and uh, mobile phone and finally online and, and the like. Um, you know, our focus has always been, uh, we've never viewed ourselves as a pay TV company or satellite company. Our focus has always been trying to obtain and create content uh, and uh, that we think New Zealanders want, try to get it at the right price in order for us and, and, and then deliver it to the consumer. Um, we have a history of being platform neutral. Um, I think 10 years ago, if we would have had this uh, uh, convention, our focus would have been entirely on you know, the new age of satellite. Uh, 10 years from now, we have this meeting that will probably be talking about a new technology none of us has heard of uh, today. Uh, just going through the ownership structure, 40% uh, are owned by uh, uh, New Zealanders. Um, the, uh, I tried to count up the number of channels. I think counting audio and uh, video are probably up to about 111 channels. Um, we employ uh, 1,000 uh, employees at, uh, up and down the country and then uh, contract uh, probably another 1,000 employees uh, in, uh, as well nationally. Um, we have reseller agreements with Telecom, Vodafone, Slingshot, Telstra Clear, retransmission with Telstra Clear. We have a deal with Vodafone. Uh, we've launched, uh, no doubt you've heard in the paper, uh, a prepay television model with, uh, with TVNZ called Igloo. Um, we have arrangements with uh, our iSky product. We have arrangements with nine ISPs to uncap and unmeter. Um, and um, probably just as important, if not the most important, is our partners with uh, to come and provide channels to us. So all these channels you see there are people that New Zealanders have uh, come to me with an idea of a channel. They pitched it to us. Uh, we've jumped at the chance and carry it. Uh, there are some other channels where we didn't think that uh, uh, we couldn't agree on a value, and they just leased out the uh, uh, capacity up on the satellite. We we really view belief uh, our our real belief is that partnership is probably one of the key successes of Sky, trying to work with people that know more about what they do than you do. Uh, iSky, after a failed attempt, we uh, regrouped and relaunched it. Now it's uh, five stream channels. All of our sports is on. Uh, we've even launched another channel called uh, ESPN 360. The only way you can get it is off the internet. Um, uh, and, and basically, this is a catch-up service. So in other words, if, uh, if, uh, uh, if you're a movie subscriber to Sky, uh, maybe 40, 50 movies off the Sky movie platform is available if you're on, you know, including the others from MGM and Discovery and the like. And uh, we're getting good uh, uh, traction on that. Uh, 12,000 movies were watched uh, by consumers uh, in the month of January, uh, 220,000 additional content pieces from uh, you know, Discovery and our sports and the like. Uh, interesting statistic, um, we have uh, unmetered, uncapped deals with uh, all but two uh, ISPs in New Zealand. That sounds pretty impressive until you realize those two ISPs uh, have 70% of the market. But 30% uh, um, uh, of our, um, that would mean that 30% of our subscribe uh, of, uh, uh, New Zealand is not with the top two. And so in other words, 30% of all the ISP customers out there um, uh, can, uh, that are Sky subscribers have, can avail themselves to iSky. But it's interesting, 50% of the viewing is done by those people with 30% of the, uh, uh, the share. So it really shows you the impact of uh, data caps and speeds. And it may sound, and please don't interpret anything that I say, on that, uh, some sort of uh, advocate of uh, net neutrality. Uh, both those uh, ISPs built their businesses without me, uh, and, uh, and, and, and I've got to make it make sense for them to do business with me, just like I built my businesses without them, and uh, it's got to make sense for both parties to, to do these deals. Uh, again, we started back in 1989 with just a, a three-channel UHF system. And uh, since then, at least over my 
last four or five years, there's some analysts that cover Sky there in the uh, crowd that can probably uh, uh, update me, but uh, I would bet we average probably investing another $120 million a year over the last uh, eight, nine years, probably $1.2 billion altogether. And it would have been a lot easier um, uh, uh, just staying with the analog uh, UHF. We could have saved a lot of money for a short period of time. But competition required us to go ahead and look at all these other uh, opportunities and, uh, and force us to invest money. Didn't necessarily enhance the bottom line. We'd have been better off without it. But uh, without investing that additional money, uh, you would have, uh, you know, you could be reading my book on the history of pay television, a little footnote on Sky TV, which got uh, destroyed real early on in the, uh, in the, in, in the evolution of pay television. Um, you know, I think the UFB going for, uh, forward will even lock, unlock lots more opportunities for us. We're very excited about it, and uh, I'll, just to get into a couple right now, um, our big push this year will be looking at multi, uh, um, multi delivery devices, including uh, iPad, game consoles, integrated television. The next generation uh, decoder we're working on right now that will go to hopefully integrate with uh, social media and uh, productive record, uh, predictive recordings. Um, uh, also companion applications, things to do while you're watching television. And I think you'll see a transition uh, from linear to pool. So in other words, you'll still get the discovery channel. I think linear channels will be around for a long time. But uh, what will change probably will be uh, all the titles, let's say on discovery channel for that month, will be in a pool. So you don't rely on us to schedule for you, or in this case, discovery channel uh, schedules uh, their own. And, and, and it gives you greater value because the content's already purchased. And we've already bought it, and you've already bought it. And uh, going to a pool concept, which can only happen with the UFB, uh, will, uh, I think, uh, really enhance the value uh, of our, our content going forward. Uh, you know, I think it's an easy decision to move forward. Barriers to uptake, uh, I realize this is part of the conference. And uh, I've looked at the notes and uh, some press reports. I've not had a chance to sit in every uh, conference. There's no doubt in my mind there's all sorts of things. But all, out of all the things I've heard, uh, that I understand, uh, which I realize limits the universe um, uh, quite a bit. The, uh, uh, all the barriers that I've heard about really, I think, can be minimized, if not eliminated, by the UFB rollout. It's not going to happen overnight, but as it continues to roll out, there won't be really uh, much uh, the ability to stand in its way will be somewhat limited. I wanted to talk about content. Over the last couple of months, there's been all sorts of articles uh, talking about uh, uh, Sky um, uh, you know, controlling so, too much content. And some of these articles have just been just completely um, uh, uh, wrong. I mean, the, my favorite one was uh, we had a gentleman from the Netflix organization come down here, and he talked about there are two things keeping him from launching Netflix. One was uh, the internet infrastructure, and, and two was uh, contractual obligation or contractual uh, deals. Let me stress that in Sky, my deals are structured the same way that Comcast or ESPN or HBO is on the States. They would not do a special deal for me down in New Zealand, as small as I am. I don't even pay their coffee bills at the Hollywood studios. And um, so my deals are the same. What's not the same is uh, the internet infrastructure. And uh, I think when he talked about con uh, uh, contract negotiations, it t takes you just as much work and effort to do a deal for all the content that you need um, on, um, on, on uh, Netflix for USA as it does New Zealand. And that's why they go to Canada and, uh, and uh, UK before they come to New Zealand. I, and make no doubt about it, uh, they are coming to New Zealand. The right that they use is, is called a subscription video on demand, not to spend too much uh, uh, time on that, but that's the right for you to buy content that allows people to pay you so much to access any of the content in there. Sky doesn't own any subscription video on demand. They won't let you buy content unless you have a way to uh, figure out how you're going to use it. Two other uh, comments that were made over the last month uh, talked about sporting code someday will may deal directly with the consumers, but regulation will be need, uh, need to happen before that uh, that can arrive. Well. Nothing's further from the truth. The sporting code bodies could deal directly with the public now if they wanted to. Uh, but again, I, I suspect the internet infrastructure kind of eliminates those debates. Um, and, uh, and so uh, just pay-per-view video on demand rights, SOD uh, rights, uh, SVOD rights, just want to hammer for the most part are generally non-exclusive. Um, 
the other one I always love is the definition of premium content, that all the documents I read, premium content is uh, typically defined by what Sky has and what none of his, their competitors have. Um, and so while I like that, uh, what always amazes me that out of the top 20 shows in uh, New Zealand each week, Sky seldom ever has any of those. So either we need to redefine what premium content is, or we need to redefine what the top 20 looks like. Uh, we're going to deliver uh, 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 the internet, the UFB will be useful over the Igloo Sky, uh, again, as I mentioned, our next generation uh, box. Just in summary, look, we think the UFB is an amazing a uh, piece of equipment that uh, I don't think could be bought, uh, done privately, then I think the only way to build it is uh, the plan that is outlined now. Um, we intend to use internet. Uh, uh, you know, it's crazy uh, to, uh, if you tried not to, uh, to ignore the, the internet and the impact that will have, it's like a train, and I'd rather get on the train than to get run over it. So I'll be happy to, um, Stick around and uh, after the uh, presentations and talk to uh, some of the issues. Thank you.